This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by Mountain Glass Arts. For the month of April 2016, Mountain Glass is offering 25% off AccuGrind joints. Just put in the code AccuGrind, that's A-C-C-U-G-R-I-N-D, at checkout. And for all you soft glass nerds, they're offering their COE 104 sale on mandrels and bead release. You can get it for 20% off. Just put in the code BEAD, that's B-E-A-D, at checkout. For them, for the questions or comments, contact mountainglass.com. That's mountainglass.com. This episode is also brought to you by C-Cube Co. C-Cube now creates a wide range of specialty and one-of-a-kind artistic glassware. Items such as hand-blown wine crafts, insulated coffee mugs, pint glasses, and custom piggy banks that you can have personalized with imprinting logos and color accents that are available. Just go to C-Cube Co. That's S-E-A-C-U-B-E-C-O dot com for more information. That's C-Cube Co. dot com. This is the Wise Guy Radio Show. A podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard, whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast, we have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. Hey, how the hell are you? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 96. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. With 17 years of experience behind the torch, I am as excited as always to bring you conversations with artists, sharing their stories and hopes to inspire and entertain while helping you grow your business. And today is no exception. Today we are getting into our series of So You Want to Be a Glassblower, and today we are going to be discussing ventilation and why it is the most important part of your studio. Uh, but before we do, I want to let you guys know that Mountain Glass has their Get It Quick sales right now going. Ends on 4-15-2016. Right now, you can get shot, buy two cases, get one free. Just put in the code SHOTTIME, that's S-C-H-O-T-T-I-M-E, for this coupon code. And for all you soft glass nerds out there, they have their CBS coatings by Sandberg Dicro sale. 20% off all sizes, again, through April 15th, 2016. Just put in the code CBS104. And you guys can just go to mountainglass.com. If you have not yet gone there and purchased anything, definitely go there and register and sign up. Uh, you'll receive their emails uh, weekly for all their sales. So you'll know and stay up to date with what's going on there, as well as listening to this show and paying attention to our Instagram pages and the newsletters that will be going out here at the end of the month. Uh, they have a lot of fun stuff. They got their new t-shirts in. Uh, they also are having their spring contest, which I want to tell you guys about. So Mountain Glass uh, has their quarterly contest to get reviews from you all, which is their best way to get feedback from the community. And right now, Mountain Glass has their spring contest, and it says, The contest is back. This time, we're looking for reviews on our website about torches and kilns. At the end of each month, for the next two months, April and May, we will randomly pick a review. The winner will receive a Mountain Glass Arts gift certificate worth $100, so get in there and start reviewing. So all you got to do is just go to mountainglass.com, go to the torches page, and then just click on uh, there and start leaving our reviews on stuff. Um, also, at the very bottom of their homepage, you'll see they where it has their sales and what have you. And they have a little flyer thing on there, too, that says torches and kilns. You just click on either one of the words, and it'll send you directly to that link, uh, which is fun. And also, for all yeah. you newbies out there, if you haven't gotten started or set up yet, uh, Mountain Glass is a great source for getting your starter kits. Uh, they also have them discounted. And if you put in the code WISEGUY, W-Y-Z-G-U-I, at checkout, you will save an additional 5% off on your purchase of your starter kits. And you guys can go to mountainglass.com forward slash wise guy uh, for more information on that. And before we get into this segment, I thought it would be fun to bring on my favorite humble pirate glass blower in our industry, the Goblin King. Uh, also, uh, his real name is Chris Dickey. 
but uh, it goes by the Goblin King. And uh, back in 2014, he wrote a little post, um, which was uh, something that he wrote after a really, really long day and night getting home at 6 a.m. after a grind to make sure that he had his orders done on time to be able to sell them and then buy food and survive. Uh, this came out of his heart, and I brought him on to uh, basically say this and speak it from his heart because uh, this is a very informative and an awesome perspective on truly what it takes at the very beginning and throughout the process and career, in a sense, of being a glass artist. So before we let him get on here, uh, just make sure you guys go to wiseguymedia.com. Uh, you'll see, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, a little pop-up will come in there. You can just throw in your email address. Uh, look for the follow-ups in your email to confirm as well. And then you'll be on your way to receiving our monthly newsletters and updates on the show, as well as all the fun things going on in the world of All Things Wise. So thank you so much again for tuning in. I am super pumped. Enjoy this uh, little PSA from the Goblin King and all the information I am about to lay down on you about ventilations and HVAC systems. Love you guys. Enjoy. Peace. How's it going? This is uh, Goblin King Glass, and I wanted to share something with you because I came into this industry with rose-tinted glasses, and I didn't really know what to expect or what uh, the reality of the industry that we share is. And in 2014, I wrote a blip on Facebook that got a lot of attention and a lot of support. And it's really just um, my realization. And I wanted to share that with you. So here we go. Here's a solid piece of advice. It's free from me to you. Blowing glass. It's not for everyone. Sure, anyone can sit down, they can try and blow glass. But I want you to ask yourself a few questions before you decide this for your life. How well do you handle rejection? Do you like the same thing over and over and over again? How much do you like money? Can you afford to live with little or no money for years at a time while you learn? Are you persistent or are you easily discouraged? Do you have friends, family to support you for those nights without heat or food? How strong is your constitution? And is this just to be famous? Because I can tell you for a fact, even when you make solid production work, you'll have a hard time selling it. So to learn this takes years and years of repetition. And you can say goodbye to loot until you learn to communicate fluently with this medium. And that could take, you know, eight, ten years. If you don't have a nest egg or a rich mom and dad, acquiring all the tools and required materials is an extensive job on its own. You're not going to do this the first time, the first day, or the first try. So persistence is key. You got to keep at it. I can say if it weren't for my friends and family, I know for a fact I wouldn't be this far. I've had a lot of help along the way. And you need to say that I'm going to do this and fucking mean it wholeheartedly with every fiber of your being. Because if your constitution is weak, you're going to quit and you'll waste everything that we've already listed. And the leaders of this community, they weren't here so they could be famous or get on some dude's nuts to get on TV. They, they were here to express themselves through flame and art and sand. And, and it's, you know, that's the beauty of it. If you're cool being poor for a while and doing nothing but melting glass, eating mac and cheese and eggs every day with no guarantee of success, then maybe this is the life for you. To be fair, there's a lot of perks to my job. And I'm my boss. My job is to create pieces people cherish. And there's no applications or drug tests or alarm clocks. You can be who you're free to be, you know. Next time you feel like someone's price or value of their work is too high, do me a favor. Lay on your side and shove that opinion up your ass. Oh, if you choose to ride the fire with this, I hope we melt together one day. So you want to be a glass blower? That's what everybody says. I want to be a glass blower. I want to be a glass blower. I want to be a glass blower. Because when you see someone doing it, it looks like a shit ton of fun. And to be honest with you, it is. Most of the time. The other times, it's the most frustrating, persevering, trial and error, experimentation, self-persevering, 
I don't know whether analogy I can use, but this shit ain't easy. And there's so many different areas that you have got to pay attention to and know about before you can really even think about getting started. Now, in this process of this episodes, uh, the segments we're going to be doing, this So You Want to Be a Glassblower, I have seven parts. And so far, we have covered two. Uh, the first was my little basic intro into the process and just talking about this whole thing. Uh, the second part was uh, getting started and set up for under 2K. Now, this is part three, which we're getting into HVAC setups and all the info that you need, including links and what have you for products and materials that are online and available for you to purchase to get yourself set up. Now, this also depends on all on where you're working. If you're not working at your house or in your own type of studio space, if you're sharing space with somebody else, this information is still viable to know, especially if maybe you go into a space that isn't necessarily set up properly. You can help whoever is there get their shit together and set it up properly. Now, if you are brand new to the process and say this person whose studio that you're in uh, has been at it for a while, they may not want to hear anything you have to say. But if you're in this space and you notice that it is not set up properly, you may want to second guess yourself or whatever and get the fuck out of there and go find another space. So whether you're in your garage or in a shed in your backyard, there is a very, very simple way to set up your ventilation. Now, I'm going to say simple in terms of simple if you know some general basic constructions. Uh, construction. If you are ignorant or don't have any kind of skills with carpentry or you know running a skill saw or a drill, then you may want to have someone come help you. You can also lay out your plans ahead of time and go to your local home store, like a Home Depot or whatever, and they can pre-cut all your wood for you, uh, which is huge. You can also bring a drawing or diagram to these places, uh, especially, uh, and I say Lowe's because my dad is a kitchen designer there, uh, but you can go to Lowe's with your plans and they'll literally will sit down with you and create a schematic blueprint and a material list and get you everything you need. So just something to think about in this process as you go along if you do not know what you're doing or have questions about this whole situation. They are there to help, as I am too. So today we are going to get into HVAC, and uh, before I begin my portion of it, I wanted to read a little bit from a uh, piece I found online uh, from a guy who is a contractor that has an awesome website full of information. Uh, this guy's name is Rob, uh, in quotes, middle name, or nickname is Doc uh, Falk. Uh, his website is uh, the, it's called nationalcomfortinstitute.com where they have free information articles and downloads and I uh, went there and got this first part of this information uh, with these formulas on here on how to calculate and figure out your CFMs, how much fan CFM you need for your space, uh, which I went over in episode 72. I'm going to cover it again here, but if you want to hear a recap or another uh, version of it, it's all the same information, but uh, episode 72 and the Q&A that I had there. We talked about uh, what's how much of a basically the question was what size fan of CFMs do I need for my space that I'm in. Um, but basically today I'm giving you a generalized uh, cover of this because you know everybody has different size spaces blah blah blah. But the formulatic process is very very simple to figure out. And I have my examples here which I'll be going through the process. But before I get too long winded here, let me go ahead and read what you got here. All right, so this guy, and this is verbatim from what this guy has. Uh, I might I paraphrase a little bit, but anyways, here we go. So he says, uh, engineering room airflow may present a real challenge when balancing an HVAC system. And an HVAC system basically is like uh, any kind of ventilation system, whether it's uh, ventilation in a studio or your air conditioning system, whatever. It's just basically uh, movement of air and air change. Uh, most calculations only use the heat loss or gain of a room to decide on required airflow and often don't take into consideration required room ventilation needs. Let's take a look at how an air change calculation may simplify the step in balancing your air. First topic, what is an air change? An air change is how many times the air enters and exits a room from the HVAC system in one hour, or how many times a room would fill up with air from the supply registers and 60 minutes. And the supply registers are basically the air coming out of your vents. So for our situation, it would be how much air is coming in from the outside into your space to change out the air and give you fresh air. You could then compare the number of room air changes to the required air changes table below, which I have in the show notes. Uh, if it's in the range, you can proceed to design and balance the airflow and have an additional assurance that you're doing the right thing. If it's way out of range, you'd better take another look. The air changes formula. 
To calculate room air changes, measure the supply airflow in a room, into a room, multiply the CFM times 60 minutes per hour, then divide the volume of the room in cubic feet. Now, your volume of your room is found by length, by width, by height. Some kind of simple algebra there, or geometry, whichever one of those that is. It's been a while. So basically, it says in plain English, we're changing CFM into cubic feet per hour. Then we calculate the volume of the room by multiplying the room height times the width times the length. Then we simply divide the CFH, which is again is cubic feet per hour, by the volume of the room. Here is an example of how it works. So for my example, for our studio space we have, and now we have change spaces, so this is different from the last time I spoke, but the calculations are still the same nonetheless. So what we did is, uh, our example is our studio is roughly around 60 by 10 by 15. So it's 60 feet long by 10 feet wide by 15 feet high. It's kind of a long, narrow space. So that being said, what I have had to figure out is that the area is approximately 600 feet or 600 square feet. Now, part of what I had to figure out in this whole process was the CFM situation first um, and calculating your volume and whatever else. So to figure this out, I went air changes per hour equals CFM times 60. So on this chart that he has, he has a list basically of typical air changes per hour table. And I chose the highest possible number, which was in a public building and it was a smoking room. And that's because by law, if you have a smoking room, it has got to ventilate all that shit out of that room and bring fresh air in. So this is telling me that per hour that this room has anywhere from 15 to 20 air changes per hour. So I went ahead and took that number 15 to 20 and just chose the highest number, which was 20. And then did my calculations. So the volume of our space, which again was length by width by height, is 9,000 feet, whatever. That's this number's 9,000. The approximate air changes per hour I have is 20. So 9,000 times 20 is 180,000. Then you divide that by 60, and that comes out to 3,000 CFMs. So in my space, to have the most adequate out take or suction in the space to get that shit out of my room is a fan that has at least a minimum of 3000 CFM. Once you can figure out the fan strength that you need for your space, you're golden because then you, because basically what you're looking at is the fan again is your biggest tool for your ventilation. <coughs> Without the proper suction, your vent will not work properly. So do your calculations first. Figure out the size of your room, your volume, all that shit figured out. Times it by 20, which I would just go ahead and do because 20 is the highest recommended number here for a smoking room. And then get your number and then divide that by 60 and then you'll figure out how many CFMs you need. So if you have a room that say is uh, 10, like a shed, like I used to have a shed that was 10 by 10 and it's probably about five feet high. So 10 by 10 is 100 and then times that by five is 500. So I would take 500, divide that by 60, and then I come up with a number, which is really small. So the space that I needed, the fan that I had, which was basically was a floor fan, which I get into, uh, was adequate enough for my ventilation space. So again, it all depends on your space. If you have an irregular shaped room, then you gotta do some calculations by squaring off the spaces, uh, figuring out the volume per space that you squared off, and then you can add all those volumes together, and then you have a total volume of your room. It's kind of some weird ways of doing it, but in this calculations on this link I have for you guys, it's all there. It's all in plain, plain English for you. So bef before I get too windy on it, uh, let's move on with the show here now. So now we need to get into uh, it's basically the basic setups. And there's two different types of ways of going about this with getting shit out of your space. One is by getting a fan in a window or by having a simple HVAC system set up for yourself. Now, if you're looking at getting a bigger studio space and blah, 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 then you're going to want to go ahead and spend some money on a larger ventilation system, which can be pretty expensive in the long run. But it's worth it because if you cut corners at the beginning, in the long run, in the end, it's going to cause lots and lots of potential health issues, not only for yourself, but for those that are coming in there and sharing your space with you and potentially paying you rent money. So you want to make sure that you don't have any kind of liability based on uh, lack of ventilation.
So depending on your setup, there are a variety of systems to set up for ventilation, fan and, and, and window, or your hood with ventilation. When setting up your bench space, the ventilation is an integral component to the studio. Build your bench around your ventilation. Okay, that's the most important part. Build your bench around your ventilation. Figure out what kind of space you have and then build your bench around what type of ventilation you're gonna end up using. Whether you're gonna be using a hood or you're going to be using just putting, uh, building your bench around your window and then putting a fan in that window. So the fan and window method is the most practical setup and the simplest and the most affordable for just getting started. But again, it depends on your space. If you have a window, installing a fan in the space is quite simple. One way to do this is to remove the window and replace it with uh, the f a frame and plywood, and then you mount the frame or you mount the fan onto the plywood. One issue you can run into by this setup is overheating the fan motor, so make sure your bench is a minimum of three feet from the wall and that your torch and flame is not pointing directly at the fan. Depending on your space, building a box around your fan and space is ideal. If your space is small enough, a box isn't necessary, but a cover over the top of your fan is ideal. This way you can control the direction of airflow, containing it and leaving through your fan. So again, if you have a space like you're in a small garage, you can have a fan and a window. Um, your ceiling, if it's low enough, will become your cover over your fan. If you have high ceilings, uh, you can get like a shelf, like a basic, bookshelf and put that above the top running across the top of the fan and that'll basically allow it so that if any heat wants to go up it'll hit the bottom of that bookshelf and then go back out the fan kind of an idea there's different ways of going about it but what I recommend is just building a box that goes your bench top you have your walls and then you have your ceiling in your in your booth space and that's all butted up flush against the wall that's your best way to go about it because in all your air is inside the box, which is then getting sucked out the fan in front of you, and nothing can escape up because, as we all know, heat rises. So just a thought. The most uh, affordable way of going about this is to buy a high-velocity floor fan, and they are plenty adequate for the needs that you have. What I recommend you do is you disassemble this fan. You pull apart the cage. So basically what you'll do is you remove the front of the cage from the fan, a lot, which leaves you with the motor, the back of the cage, and the fan all mounted inside of itself. For example, if your fan is 18 inches in diameter, then you should cut your opening of your plywood to around 17 to 17 and a half inches, giving you space to mount the cage to the plywood, giving the blades freedom to move without hitting the plywood. And you can do that by just getting some, uh, some tie-down clips or clamps. Um, there's different ways of going about mounting the frame, the cage itself, to your uh, plywood there. Um, I don't know the name specifically, but they're like these little plastic uh, gimmicks. It's like a flat piece of plastic uh, that you can uh, basically creates a circle, and you can screw it to a, a wall and then run hoses through it or whatever. I mean, there's, you, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But just just an idea of a basic way to hang and mount your fan uh, to the plywood. And then on the other side of the opening, now you are going to have your blades are going to be exposed to the outside. So you want to make sure that you cover that with either the other half of the cage that you removed and just mount that over the opening on the other side. Or you can go and purchase a gable vent, which will then cover the fan opening and will have little level or uh, flappy kind of gimmicks so when your air is blowing out they open up and when your air is off they close and it'll be uh, it'll be uh, the safest way for you to make sure that you keep birds from flying into your fan uh, from friends or kids sticking their hands in there and also keeps the weather out of your studio which is the most important part along with the vermin and other shit that can get in there so now that we figured this out uh, the type of setup that you would need to get for building uh, the fan in the window setup is going to cost you anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks. Not too bad. And I will have this uh, checklist in a P on a PDF that you guys can download and take to the store if you need to. Uh, the second more efficient setup is a hood or HVAC system that is ideal for larger spaces, multiple torch setups. This is uh, can get expensive, but on a budget you can accomplish it in an adequate setup for yourself. For starters, you will need to build your bench and incorporate a hood or depending on your setup, a box you'll work inside of. Again, like we said about the first setup, uh, same kind of thing. Without getting a lar into a large HVAC system, here is the basic way you can create this on a budget. 
First thing you want to do is build your space again, like we said before, making sure your space is approximately six feet wide by four feet deep by four feet high. That's about the space I work in myself. This will basically build yourself a box to work inside of that will give you the most adequate suction and airflow for your ventilation. And then you're going to want to look for a hood of some sort to capture this air to relieve your, your box that you're in. Now you can go on Craigslist or you can go on eBay or you can go buy a new one, whatever, but just go get a basic kitchen hood. Uh, you're not going to be using the fan inside the kitchen hood itself. You can as a secondary fan to help suck all that shit out of there. Uh, but mostly, if you can, just use it for the housing itself. Uh, you don't even have to even wire anything to it. Now, after you get this hood set up, uh, the top of the hood, get a real basic, you know, super basic, basic hood. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do then is get your fan. Now, you're going to need an inline fan or a blower fan, preferably 6 to 8 inches in diameter, which will give you anywhere from 300 to 1,000 CFMs, depending on the fan, and they run anywhere from 85 to $150. Next, you'll need duct that will go from the top of your hood, mount to the outside of your fan shroud. And Next, you're going to need is duct work that will go from the top of your hood and mount to the outside of your fan shroud. Typically, the blower fans taper down to allow for the duct work to fit around it securely, and then you just use a hose clamp to tighten it down around that taper. Depending on where you are venting out your bad air, depending on where you are venting out your bad air, you can either run it into a window that is near you or in a f in front of your bench. Oh, depending on where you are venting out your bad air, you can either run it out a window that is near you or add a section of duct to the other side of the fan. So that way your fan is basically sandwiched between two sections of duct work. The outflow side of the fan with its ductwork attached, can run again through a window or out a door, but remember that ideally you want to minimize the amount of turns and bends in the ductwork to minimize internal static pressure, which slows down airflow, especially when you're dealing with 90 degree bends. So try to avoid any acute angles like a 90 degree bend or uh, in the ductwork. An arch is more ideal for flow, but really a straight line is the best, best, most adequate flow. This installation process is quite simple as long as you know, again, some basic construction uh, uh, techniques. <laughs> Lost for words here for a second. It's not that difficult to do. Uh, la, 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 la. So if you've already built your bench and your box that you're going to be working inside of, uh, it's also going to have a ceiling on there. Now you're going to mount your uh, hood to the top inside of the ceiling. So basically you're going to cut a hole out that is the diameter of the section coming off the top of your duck or I mean off the top of your hood that will slide through that opening uh, that will then on the opposite side of the you know the top of your of your box is where your duck is going to attach to. So you securely mount your your uh, hood inside your box and then on top you secure your duck work to that portion of the vent or the hood there. And then you run your duct work for however long you need to run it to. Uh, ideally, I wouldn't go any more than, say, 10 feet from your space to where your fan's going to be. Uh, you don't want your fan super close necessarily to the hot air coming in through the duct work because you can burn it out. But if it's far enough away, say 10 to 15 feet, uh, the air inside the duct work is going to get a chance to cool down. And then once it hits the fan, it won't be so damn hot because your air is literally running through the fan. Uh, these inline fans are designed that way to basically just draw air in a straight line so it goes in one side and pushes out the other. Like a normal fan does, but this is all encased and, in, in, you know. So once you have your fan and the situation figured out to where everything's going to be mounted, you then want to again figure out where your outside air flow is going to go to, uh, the, or your inside air flow from your ductwork is going to go to, whether it's out your door or a window. So the breakdown on cost, your fan will cost anywhere from 80 to 150 bucks. The hood will cost anywhere from 30 to 50 and then you can find 25 foot duct work that's about eight inches or that is eight inches in diameter uh, that's going to cost you 20 and then you can get a wall uh, doer thingy that basically the same kind of things that uh, your duct work is attached to for a dryer to get the hot air out of your garage uh, so you can get one of those things that will then mount to the end of the uh, of your duct work which will is where your air is going to be pushed out of and again, it's a real simple setup. It's just making sure that you do it right. 
Uh, there's other tools you can get. There's little hangers you can get for uh, hanging the ductwork, unless you say run the ductwork along the ground. Um, ideally, you want to have it to be uh, on your, uh, you know, run along uh, your ceiling or run along the wall. Uh, that is the same height, basically, as it is when it comes out of the top of the hood itself. And I'll have a link and some diagrams to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. And I hope this all makes sense. I'm kind of going back and forth and rambling a little bit, but I just want to make sure I cover all the bases here. So now that you've figured out your estimated CFM requirements for your space and the fan and box setup that you're required to have for the space, you now need to take into consideration how much and where you're getting your makeup air from. Your makeup air is basically fresh air that comes from the outside, allowing your space to equalize the static pressure in the room and also continuing to bring you oxygen. This can come from the exterior open window, a garage door, or just a regular exterior door. But the most important thing to consider with this fresh air coming in is the direction that it's coming in. You want to ensure proper ventilation and that it is important to make sure that the fresh air coming in is not blowing across your bench or interfering with your torch. If there isn't enough air coming in, you'll be dealing with static air issues, which means you're not refreshing your air equally, literally sucking the oxygen out of the room faster than you are replacing it. This will lead to an unhealthy environment and potential health issues in the future or worse if your studio is attached to your house. In the winter or summer times, depending on if you are attached to your house, you could literally suck the air out of your house or the heat out in the winter. And in the winter, if you're running a gas furnace, you can do, be then dealing with carbon monoxide poisoning because you'll be sucking the carbon monoxide off gases from your furnace. So one thing I recommend buying if you do have that type of setup is to get a carbon monoxide detector, which is very affordable and will save your life in the long run. Uh, carbon monoxide poisoning is one of those silent killers, just like high blood pressure, that you never really know that you have or are dealing with until it's too late. If you have a garage door, I recommend either opening it all the way or at least halfway, giving you a good amount of fresh air coming into the studio. You could also get a another floor fan to help blow air in from the outside as well as uh, helping refresh your air quality in your space. But remember that that fan should not be blowing anywhere near your torch. Um, I know myself personally, I have a floor fan underneath my bench that blows up at me. That usually blows at my legs or up in my chest area. Uh, sometimes it does affect my flame, so I try to avoid having it blowing too far up into my face. But it does help to have an extra fan to bring the air in. Just remember, do not cut corners because in the long run, it could be deadly. And I hope this has helped everybody that is listening to give you some kind of clarity on ways to set up your studio space, especially your ventilation on a budget with the most adequate possible ventilation setup you can have. There's a few links in the show notes that will take you to a website that deals again with the HVAC systems, along with ways to calculate the CFMs that you require for your space that you have in, and also links to materials, products to the referred to this topic, as well as a few diagrams or examples on recommendations discussed in this episode. So I hope you all have enjoyed this talk. Again, just give you some things to think about, to look at your setup that you have now if you already have one, and if you have not made one yet, gives you some insights on how to properly make this happen. If you have any questions or information or uh, want to talk about this uh, more, please contact me, info at wiseguyradio.com. That's info at W-Y-Z-G-U-Y radio.com. Um, I have no problems. I will definitely help you out. If you want to send me a picture of your space, uh, we can discuss it and kind of help you figure out the best way to go about ventilating your studio space. Uh, I, you know, We all like working out of our houses or in other shared spaces with other artists. But whichever your forte is, uh, just make sure you have the best ventilation possible. So until next time, guys, I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been our third segment of So You Want to Be a Glass Blower. We're getting closer and closer to episode 100, which is fucking amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all the support and love. And I cherish every comment and conversation I have about the show and the feedback I've gotten. So keep them coming. Again, info at wiseguyradio.com. Come follow me on Instagram at J Michael Glass. That's J M I C H A E L Glass. Or also come follow the uh, our Instagram page for the show. It is Wise Guy Radio, which is W Y Z G U Y underscore R A D I O. And until then, we will see you guys on episode ninety seven, which features Box Fan Willie Menzies. All right, y'all, take it easy. Love ya. Peace.
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. If you have any questions, comments, or remarks, please leave them in the show notes page area where it says comments. We'll see you soon. Have a wise night.